In this video, I'm going to be explaining to you how you can drive the ball better. So discussing some setup changes, some backswing changes and some downswing changes that I think you can try that's going to help you hit the ball further and straighter to lower your scores. So for me, hitting drivers probably the most important skill in golf everybody says that putting and short game is probably the most important part and whilst i do agree short game and putting are vital to good scoring but i think it was ben hogan that said if you can't put you can't score but if you can't drive you can't play if you can't drive the ball and you're constantly chipping out or hitting into hazards losing balls or whatever every time you hit a drive if it's costing you two or three shots then you're really never ever going to be a good player whereas if you're someone who doesn't chip great or doesn't put well if you can still get to the green in two after a good drive and a reasonable approach, you're still going to make lots of pars. So improving your putting and chipping in the short term can really help you knock three, four, five strokes off your game. But if you want long term improvement and you want to bring your handicap down across years and years and years, you've got to learn to drive the ball well. So throughout the years, there have been a number of exceptional drivers of the golf ball. Modern players like McElroy and Scheffler older players like Nicholas was a fabulous driver of the ball Hogan was a good driver of the ball Greg Norman's another player who was an excellent driver of the ball controversial comment with all the live stuff but we can't deny he was so dominant when he was driving the ball well and um, Faldo drove it well didn't drive it long but drove it really straight and that's what allowed him to get to world number one so we just can't overlook this as something we have to be good at. Although all those players did swing the club differently, there are a number of things that we can learn from their technique, their address, their swings, that we can implement in our games to make us better with the, with the big sticks. So first thing to think about is getting a nice wide base, a nice wide stance. I want your shoulders shoulder width or even just slightly wider than shoulder width. We need a big solid base if we're gonna use our body to generate speed. You can't fire a cannon out of a canoe and you can't hit a driver from a narrow, weak stance. So let's get a nice wide base. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna line the ball up with our lead heel. Um, some players might need it slightly further back, other players might want it slightly further forward, depending on what kind of shape you're trying to hit. But generally, we want it just inside left heel. If you're looking to hit a fade, you might wanna play the ball further forwards, as that's gonna drag your path left. Or if you're desperate to hit a draw, you might move the ball slightly further back so that you can hit it more on the inside of the arc. Something else I like to see sort of mid to high handicappers do is tee the ball up as high as physically possible. Now, in lessons when I'm doing this with players, they all sort of will say, oh, I feel like I'm gonna sky the ball and whilst in practice you might do that a little bit the reason i want you to tee the ball up higher is because it forces you to stay behind the ball and hit more up on it we know that when you swing steep into the ball it makes you a poor driver and teeing the ball low encourages you to be steep so i would always try and encourage players to tee the ball up as high as possible because that's going to allow them to hit up on the ball it gives you a bit more speed gives you a bit more optimal launch and is ultimately going to make you get further down the hole. Final thing I'm always looking for people to do in their address with driver is get their spine tilt correct. So in any sport where, where, the, where we throw the ball or launch an object, we always do that from a position where we're tilted back and it should be the same in the golf swing. So once you get into your address position, we want our trail shoulder to be lower than our lead shoulder, which means our spine angle is tilted away from the target. And that's just set me in a position again where I can stay behind the ball, I'm gonna hit up on the ball, and it's just gonna give me a good chance to get those optimal launch conditions up from the inside with a closing face. That's gonna give us that sort of high launch, low spin that we're looking for. Oh, hey, you're still here. Thank you. So most of you guys watching this are not subscribers. And although the few subscribers that are watching this, thank you very much for being here. I could really do with the help. If you subscribe, like, and comment, even if you think I'm stupid, that really boosts the engagement and helps get this video out to more people and helps me grow. So anything you can do to help, that'd be great. Getting our setup right is moves us a lot closer towards the finish line, and that might be enough for you to start driving the ball better, hitting it further, hitting it straighter. But if that's not enough, we can start to look at some in-swing ideas that are gonna make you a better driver. Now, all those players that I spoke about who have been great drivers over time. They do all have different swings, but they, there are some common characteristics that they all have in their swings that we can copy. They're, they're, 
all those players have different styles they all generally sort of have the same dna um which is why they're good drivers so the the first thing we we want to talk about is width so all the all the best drivers of the ball have always been very wide and by wide i mean the distance the club head moves away from the golf ball in the backswing is much bigger a narrow swing would be where the club head doesn't travel that far my hands are much closer to my body and a wide swing would be a swing where i'm pushing that club head the maximum distance away from the ball it could possibly go i've pushed i'm pushing my arms away i'm not bending my right arm very much on the way back trying to get the club head and my hands as far away from the golf ball as i physically can creating width gives us a longer golf swing which allows us to generate more club head speed and it also generally gives us a more shallow swing so width is a huge one the next thing all of those players did is they would create good depth to the club head and um, throughout the backswing what that means is how far inside the ball moves in the backswing so uh, a swing with no depth would be very straight and high and a swing with lots of depth the club would move back and away much further over here so again more depth is going to give us a greater opportunity for an inside path to hit a draw it allows us to swing a bit more shallow hit the ball more on the up and it's going to allow the club face to be closing into the ball which is what's going to help us shut the face the path and hit that draw shot we're wide wide in the arms wide in the club head but we're deep to the arms deep to the club head and then the final thing that they all do is they all have massive turns so a, a big turn doesn't just mean good shoulder turn it also means a good hip turn so like this right hip is going to be moving back which means the right leg moves back the, the left knee comes forward which allows me to turn my shoulders much further so once i combine all of those things wide arms deep hands big turn i'm, I'm pretty much 95 percent of the way there to being a great driver of the ball oh my god what is this driver setup i've just hit this biggest snap hook of my life maybe it was me maybe it was my super super draw swing interestingly when i do all of those things get my address right wide stance spine angle ball position and high t and then i just focus on turn width and depth i can't do anything but draw the ball If you're doing all of those setup things and all of those backswing characteristics and you're still not driving the ball well, which is really unlikely, but if you're still not driving the ball well, there are some things we can do in the downswing in order to help. From that sort of big turn, wide and deep backswing position we're now in, what we need to try and do in the, in the downswing, we need to move our hips laterally towards the target whilst keeping our head back. And you can sort of see how that that brings the club down on the inside i'm going to hit the ball with slightly closed shoulders with my weight forwards golfers all the time get to the top and then spin and move their upper body forwards and you can see as i do that how much over the top and outside that gets the club head and from there i'm always going to be hitting down and across which might be okay for a short time but it's terrible for a driver absolutely terrible we've got to avoid doing this if we can so big turn width and depth and then hips forward heads head back so my weight is forward but my, I'm, I'm angled away from the, the target into this sort of looking impact position <laughs> the cherry on the cake here really is trying to get our arms straight by impact so most golfers again the over the top slices hitting down and across those players have their arms or certainly their trail arm very bent because they would sky the ball this is where those people who were skying the ball a lot are complaining is the spinning they can't extend their arms otherwise they'd hit it right out of the heel so they're pulling their arms in it's weak there's no speed to the club head there's no like cracking of the whip there's no throw here it's just pulling in which costs you speed gives us suboptimal launch conditions and gets us hitting down and across it's absolutely awful it's the real we've got to avoid doing that where we can big turn width and depth 
and as we swing down it's straighten the arms hips forward head back and then I'm telling you you're gonna hit this so far on the up you're gonna hit this so far on the inside and you're really gonna get that face closing that you're gonna go from a massive slicer to like McElroy draws or even hooks that you're gonna be ringing me up in two weeks and saying oh Jack I can't believe it I'm now in the left trees all the time instead of the right trees and then that's a whole different problem but let's see if we can do that so good setup wide high T ball forward spine tilt we're gonna go big turn width and depth hips forward head back arm straight and then just let it go Oof. I know that's a lot of thoughts but you don't you don't need to be thinking about all those things you need to start with the setup make the setup changes see if that works if that doesn't completely work then do the backswing changes if those don't work then you really have some trouble with your swing so maybe you need to reach out for a lesson it's only if the setup doesn't work and it's only if the backswing doesn't work do we then go to downswing Oof. I'm not saying that you're going to start swinging like Greg Norman or McElroy, but if we can start to work these characteristics into our swings, then you are definitely going to drive the ball better. Once you're making good contacts and you're hitting the ball higher with a draw, then you can really start to work on the more high level skills of shot dispersion, shot shape, trajectory control, club face control and club head speed. Um, you might work, try and work some drills into your practice where you're working on those different skills but that's much further down the line you don't really want to work on that until you've got a good strike a good launch and a better shape hopefully that all makes sense we've been through quite a lot there there's a lot of technical advice in that video but it's all really really good stuff if you think my content's any good please like and subscribe it helps me grow and um, it helps me make more content like this to help you guys so thanks very much